Welcome back to the nationally syndicated Price of Business show. Michael Neuenschwander, he is a regular on the Price of Business show. His, his company is Outlook Wealth, uh, OutlookWealth.com, and always enjoy having him on the program. He is both a personal favorite, a fan favorite. Uh, we get great feedback every time he is on. And, you know, we have, I think, uh, you know, a crew of uh, recurring guests in the financial space that is good, are as good as any. In fact, a Bloomberg producer says, wow, your people are, are at the same caliber as ours. And I found that as to be a great uh, compliment, but also true. We've got the billionaires, several who have been a uh, guest, some of which have been recurring guests. We've got the CNBC anchors and Fox Business anchors and Yahoo Finance anchors. Um, you know, one of the things I really like is someone who is in the trenches, rose up his sleeves on a regular basis, and really works in this front helping people in the real world of finance. And that's exactly what they do at Outlook Wealth. Michael, always love having you on the program. Before we get started on our topic, a little bit more about your firm. Well, thanks, Kevin. Always great to be here. So, uh, yes, uh, Outlook Wealth Advisors. We're a uh, financial advisory firm, you know, based uh, based in the woodlands, but uh, really help clients all over. And uh, I'd say our uh, our approach is we take that holistic you know view. While everybody uh, believes the financial advisor is there to uh, you know to help on the investments, which is definitely true. You know, there's so much more to it. You know, addressing taxes, some of which we'll touch on today. You know, addressing the the healthcare, the income plan. You know, how do you turn that savings into paychecks and uh, and the legal front, making sure your legal documents are all in order. So at, uh, at Outlook Wealth, we want to take that uh, holistic view and make sure all those critical areas are addressed. Yes, phenomenal. And, and you know, it's very interesting that most people would not go to multiple doctors, uh, you know, that, that are non-specialists, other words, general physicians, um, getting different prescriptions for meat. You know, that would be, that would be, well, that's how people die, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, and uh, yet, uh, that's kind of how a lot of people treat, treat uh, their wealth uh, management and uh, creating a lot of confusion, a lot of disruption, and really uh, not, not the soundest approach. So I love what you guys do there and glad we get to talk about it. Now, here we are, you know, I'm, I'm in denial. In my mind, it's still early 2000. 21. Forget about 2022. I mean, I, I'm in a time warp constantly, but the reality is, is we're in the final weeks, not even months, weeks now, it, it, you know, for all practical purposes for 2022. And there's a lot to be done, particularly if you want to uh, be in the best uh, position financially uh, when it comes to things like your taxes. So why don't you, why don't you kind of set the stage for us by, by giving us an overview of what you talk to your clients about this time of the year? Yeah, yeah. Well, as you said it, you know, end of the year is going to be here before you before we know it, and uh, see, wow, you know, where's twenty two gone? But uh, as we look at kind of coming towards uh, towards that end of the year and kind of look at strategies that people either should be thinking about or, in many cases, taking advantage of, you know, there's a few we can touch on, but let's touch on like some of the big ones here first. You know, one for most people is uh, you know looking at you know. Roth conversions, purpose, purposeful distributions, you know, out of retirement accounts. So that's one strategy where if uh, if you find yourself income today is is either lower, you know, than than what it was previously, whether a job change or just self-employed, if business is down some, etc. Or, you know, for many people, we got to take into account we know taxes are going up, you know, here in another four years. And so, quite simply, the strategy may be looking at your tax bracket and saying if if there's room in your existing tax bracket, does it make sense to purposely take money out of those IRA accounts because today's bracket may be cheaper for you, you know, than it's going to be in four or five years down the road? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so it's really being uh, proactive in your strategy, and and you know, and and there's something to be said, particularly if you're in a weird spot uh, when it comes to your tax situation, trying to make adjustments or, or major changes in the income. You know that to, to have a traditional IRA, you know, and you can have more than one. You don't have to have, you know, you're you're limited in, on how much you can get, uh, you know. Uh, uh, tax savings on it, uh, but you, but you're not limited in, in putting in it. At least that's my understanding. Um, but um, it, it, you know, it, sometimes it makes sense to have a formula that includes a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA, doesn't it? 
Well, it, it, and it does, and this is where we got to watch ourselves, Kevin, because so so much of this, unfortunately, is personal facts and circumstances. So you know, not to not to right. necessarily toot toot my horn, but this is one that uh, it definitely makes sense to either get with get with your tax preparer, or get with your financial advisor if they're versed on you know on how taxes really work, because some things you have up until April you know to do that you can wait till wait till you basically get your tax forms and then figure out if it makes sense. You can sort of retroactively do it. But certain things such as Roth conversions, you know, contributions from, you know, into your 401k, um, even big uh, business deductions, you know, a lot of that stuff has to be done before December 31st. You can't, you can't wait till after the deadline and then look backwards you know, on some of these things. Yes. And, and by the way, I, I appreciate you saying that. We have a nice little disclaimer at the end of our show, you know, about the fact whatever you hear here, you know, this is for, for uh, informational and entertainment purposes, always talk to a financial professional. Uh, and, of course, I like talking to you, but no matter what, don't make decisions based on what you hear on any program without talking to a financial professional. Shame on you if you do. So talk about, yeah. uh, you know, in particular, I, I think what comes up pretty quickly are uh, simply donating. You know, I, I think people complain about having too much stuff pretty often, uh, but that's a mm -hmm. nice thing people can do to uh, help uh, humankind while at the same time help their tax situation. Yeah, so there's, and we can talk for hours, obviously, on taxes, but to kind of keep it user friendly, you know, even in donating, there's several strategies. So, one, simply cleaning out the closets, you know, donating it to your favorite, favorite local charity. Definitely can get a tax deduction. However, uh, if you're not itemizing, meaning you have to have for a married couple, you know, over roughly twenty-five thousand dollars, you know, of different uh, property taxes, mortgage, you know, all those things that go into it. If you're not going to get over that threshold, you know, it's good, still good to clean out the closets, but you're not going to get the tax break for it. So. On this year's rules, you know what you're allowed to do is a married couple. They can donate six hundred dollars, you know, in terms of cash, and you can take that deduction without having to itemize. Uh, but for a lot of people, some of the bigger strategies I'll touch on that we work with clients all the time on. Um, one is this term called a QCD or a qualified charitable distribution, and that says. You can take money out of your IRA account. It doesn't count as income to you, uh, but it goes to the charity. And that's really powerful for people that are subject to required distributions, which, uh, of course, is now age 72. They're talking about making it even later. Uh, but that provision actually still applies for anybody age 70 and a half. So in essence, uh, rather than having to take a required distribution show as income and then try to get a deduction, you can just give that money right to the charity. You know, one other powerful tool that applies for almost everybody, though, if you were routinely giving money to, to church, charity, you know, your, fa your favorite cause, um, but you're not able to get above that threshold, meaning you can't itemize because you're not giving enough in any one year, there's another provision called a donor-advised fund. And all that means is maybe you earmark what you were going to give for the next three, four, or five years. You don't have to give it today, but you basically set it aside in the separate account and by doing so, you get the tax deduction for the whole thing today. And so what? that may be another powerful <laughs> tool for people to think about as well. <laughs> yeah. So this is fascinating to me because, honestly, uh, and this really comes down to the difference of talking to just a CPA, right, uh, and talking to a CPA who also understands, uh, you know, or an accountant who also understands the larger picture here. Uh, I got to tell you, Michael, over the years I have interviewed many, many uh, CPAs in this space. Some financial advisors, but for whatever reason, uh, never got into the you know end end of year uh, inventory. Uh, your your the stuff, some of the stuff you're sharing here, I haven't heard from CPAs. Well, and the, like I said, you know that's part part of our niche is trying to make the financial and investing and the tax things match up to to make sense. And so, uh, you know, a couple other, you know, as we as we sort of you know become to year end, you kind of mentioned it in passing, but it says uh, anybody can make a contribution to an IRA. But depending on whether you're covered by a plan at work, depending on income, it's a different question of whether you get to deduct it or not. 
and so, but for many people, there's also a thing called a, a backdoor, you know, Roth that uh, allows you to make a non-deductible contribution and then immediately convert it to a Roth. And so it's it's sort of a way around some of those Roth limitations, but th- that strategy is definitely very uh, detail specific. So once again, don't anybody go run off and do it without <laughs> making sure you uh, know the facts yeah. and circumstances of whether it applies to you or not. Yeah, yeah one, it's like uh, watching America's Got Talent, and someone's going to jump over twenty cars on a motorcycle. Don't do this. Don't do this. You know, at home or whatever. And uh, you know, uh, do it, but do it properly. And that's where it requires advice. This is this is fascinating. Frankly, we might have to do a part two, uh, even as we get closer, because I can even tell by the tone of your voice. There's so much more. <laughs> I mean, there really is so much more uh, uh, to share. But this is, to me, very valuable. And, again, it's that rubber meets the road. It's the roll-up-your-sleeves approach. That, uh, and but maybe the most important word today, uh, not to sound like Mr. Rogers, uh, is the word holistic, you know, that complete picture that I think is really unfortunately neglect, neglected uh, when it comes to people and their money. And so I think people like to have lots of advisors and they end up having lots of confusion. And you just really need to do your homework and find someone you trust. It doesn't mean you don't get other advice. It doesn't mean you don't get other information. But uh, you really need to have a disciplined approach. And it seems like the more uh, more counselors you have to a certain extent, you get more confusion rather than uh, sound advice. Uh, um, Final thoughts as we wrap it up. Uh, always, always more conversation than time, Michael. Yep, yep, always. And if, uh, and if, uh, if I can, if we have time, I'll, I'll share one last. You know, that kind of does overlap that uh, investment and tax, and so. You know, many people may know you can. You know, obviously, if investments are down this year, you can take a, a tax deduction on your return, but it's generally limited to three thousand bucks. However, you know, you still want to recognize those losses. In many cases, the term is called a tax loss harvest. What that really does is, even though you can only deduct a little bit today, it makes much of your future capital gains then tax-free as you're able to use up that deduction. And again, if we think tax rates are going up in the future, having a little bit of a banked, you know, tax-free, you know, capital gain going forward may be more valuable to you than it ever has been before. So one last tidbit, as I know we got to wrap up here today. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, we might have to explore this more in November because this is very helpful, very unique. And I, I don't think a lot of people are hearing this elsewhere. Michael Neuschwander, uh, again, his website, Outlook Wealth. Dot com. I'm Kevin Price. This is the nationally syndicated Price of Business show.